welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of a mother of perpetual health. Redemptorists, their friends and devotees of Our Lady are happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. Let us for a moment open our minds and hearts in contemplation of this ancient picture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom we call our mother of perpetual health. See on this mother's face a quiet and sad expression. Having long ago given her yes to God to be the mother of God's son, she is now experiencing the cost of her yes, much as we sometimes have to count the cost in our daily lives of being followers of Jesus' teachings. She holds the child firmly in her arms, wrapped in her veil of sacred blue. She gazes out at us, a message of graceful acceptance of both joy and difficulty that comes with a life that we have chosen and which has chosen us. Her path is our path. Step by step, we struggle to become steadfast in the ways of love, hope, and faith. Let us look at the angels, Michael and Gabriel, presenting to Mary the symbols of her son's passion, death, and resurrection. They are there in this painting to remind us that no tragedy or loss in our life is ever without a redeeming grace. Sometimes this message will come to us quickly. Sometimes we may have to wait in patience until all is right and we are all one with Jesus in heaven. See the child's sandal hanging loose yet still attached. Our life here on earth is fragile and precarious. But like Jesus here, we trust that we are always held firmly in the grasp of the one who loves us, even before our life began. Let us look at the star in Mary's veil, recalling the star that led the Magi, also known as the three wise men, to find Jesus, and another star that led them to safety away from Bethlehem. Mary, our mother, is our star, leading us always to Jesus and keeping us safely in his presence as we go on our way through life. And let us recall in our own time the powerful words about Mary from Vatican II. By her motherly love, she cares for her sons, sisters, and brothers who will journey on earth, surrounded by dangers and difficulties and they are led into their blessed home. Woman of mystery, woman of deep trust, answering yes, word became flesh, the one born of wisdom, the Son you call Jesus, the Son of
Have you ever noticed how many beautiful churches dot the landscape in Canada? As a student preparing to be a Redemptorist over several years, I have traveled the country a few times and the many outstanding church buildings that I would see really made an impression. Each with their own style and architecture. Each with their own design and decoration. Yet apart from the typical church architecture that aids in the celebration of daily and Sunday Eucharist, one typical common element seems to unite many churches that I have visited. The presence of Mary and the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Help. For over 135 years, the people of God in Canada have journeyed with Mary under the title of our Mother of Perpetual Help, as she has accompanied us in our journey of faith. In 1866, when Pope Pius IX gave us, the Redemptress, the instruction, make her known throughout the world. This beautiful icon has accompanied us everywhere. St. Patrick's Shrine Church in Toronto, a Redemptorist parish, has been home to the weekly devotions to our Mother of Perpetual Help since 1881. When the Redemptorists first arrived to assume the pastoral ministry of the church by the invitation of Archbishop John Joseph Lynch of Toronto. We read from the annals of the Redemptorist community, December 4th, 1881, on this day, the picture of Our Lady of Perpetual Help was solemnly blessed and carried in procession around the aisles of St. Patrick's Church. A large concourse of people were present. Indeed, many were obliged to go away, being unable to enter the church. This was the beginning of the weekly devotions to Our Lady, first every Saturday evening then on Sunday. I should say, over the years, we Redemptorists began to refer to Our Lady as Our Mother. Special novenas and triduums to mark Our Mother's feast days became popular among the faithful in the city of Toronto. So much so, that in 1925, another service would be held on Wednesdays as well. December 11th, 1929, saw the start of the continuous novena on Wednesdays, with devotions, masses, rosary, and opportunities for reconciliation being available throughout the day, much like it is today at St. Patrick's. Then in 1941, a special ceremony was held to mark the 75th anniversary of the enthronement of the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Help in the shrine of St. Alphonsus Church, which is also the Redemptorist Parish in Rome. It was an entire year of special celebrations. As the devotions were being celebrated throughout Canada, St. Patrick's in Toronto began to be known as the National Shrine because of its long history of devotions to Mary. We often say that while the Redemptress went everywhere in the world bringing the icon of our Mother with them, here at St. Patrick's, the world has come to us. St. Patrick's today is the spiritual home to many cultures and ethnicities coming to us over the century. Pilgrims have come to Toronto to find not only a new life, but also to seek out the shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help at St. Patrick's in order to continue their devotions from their lives in their home country. In 2004, the shrine was restored to its present design, along with the restoration of the entire church. The beauty and simplicity of the church now continues to draw pilgrims each week to our six masses dedicated to our Mother Perpetual Help and to the activity of parish life and outreach to
to the community at large. Following in true Redemptor's tradition, St. Patrick's Shrine Church is a place of compassion and mercy, a ministry of presence and hospitality. We give thanks to God for our shrine to our Mother Perpetual Help. We thank God for the millions upon millions of pilgrims who have found in St. Patrick's a place of prayer, of meditation, and devotion each week for over 135 years. We are a shrine for the people, established on the prayers and confidence in our Mother's intercession and companionship in their life. As we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Redemptorist mission to make her known throughout the world, given to us by Pope Pius IX, we know that this year is a special year of Jubilee for the faithful devoted to Mary, and it is an invitation to others to join us. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before you, holy picture, in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our life today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord. Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick Intercede for our sick, that we may receive good health, and they in turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoice as your Son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. I can still remember the first time I saw an icon of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Or perhaps it was just the first time that I noticed it. Maybe I had seen it many times before and just didn't pay it any attention. Only when I began to pursue a religious and priestly vocation in the Redemptorist community did I learn the history and meaning of this picture. The year 2016 marks the 150th anniversary of Pope Pius IX entrusting the original icon of our Mother Perpetual Help to the Redemptorists. It's an intriguing story,
perhaps you've heard it before. The origins of the icon are unknown, but scholars suggest that it was painted in the 14th century. Through a remarkable series of circumstances, it found its way into the Church of St. Matthew, located on the street that runs from the Basilicas of St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran in Rome. This is where the Virgin Mary, through a revelation, had indicated that she wanted her image to be venerated between these two impressive basilicas. It soon became noted for the healings and other favors obtained by prayer to the Blessed Mother before this image. When Napoleon Bonaparte's troops conquered Rome in 1798, the non-believing commander of the French troops concluded that there were far too many churches and chapels in the Eternal City, so he set about to dismantle a good number of them. Among those destroyed was the Church of St. Matthew. Thereafter, the fate of this miraculous image of our Mother of Perpetual Help seemed unknown. In the early 1860s, a popular Jesuit preacher was giving a series of sermons on miraculous images of the Blessed Virgin. One such sermon focused on the missing miraculous image of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Hearing a description of the icon, a young Roman Redemptorist realized that this missing picture was the very one that he had often seen as a young altar server, serving Mass at a side altar in a nearby Augustinian monastery. With the joy of someone who has found a lost treasure, he and his Redemptorous confreres petitioned the Pope to have this icon entrusted to them and to be placed according to the Blessed Mother's own instruction in a church between St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran. On April 26, 1866, Pope Pius IX gave the miraculous icon to the Redemptorous congregation with the instruction to make her known and loved throughout the world. I dare say that the Redemptorists have been faithful to their commission. What do you see in this icon? What is depicted there? Well, front and center is Mary, the Blessed Mother. In her arms is the boy Jesus looking up at the angels while Mary is looking out at us. They and the angels are identified by the Greek letters near them, Mother of God, Jesus Christ, the Archangel Gabriel and Michael the Archangel. The angels are carrying what will become the instruments of Jesus' passion, Gabriel carrying a cross, and Michael holds a spear and a sponge at the end of a hyssop stick. A picture is worth a thousand words. I'm sure you've heard that saying before. So what is the story behind this icon? According to the legend, one day when Jesus was still a young boy growing up in Nazareth, the archangels Michael and Gabriel appeared to him, carrying these frightful instruments of torture and death. The innocent boy, frightened by such a sight and wondering what it might mean, ran straight away into his mother's arms. He ran so fast, in fact, that he broke the strap of one of his sandals. You will notice that it's dangling from his foot. For her part, Mary comforts and consoles the child, assuring him that she will protect and help him, that all will be well. Her gaze at us, who look upon this image, suggests that she will also assure us in our fears and needs, that she will be our perpetual hell.
Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother of perpetual help. Grant wisdom and courage to all religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, the Pope, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvest in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands abiding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity and strength, and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly, vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many labors for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. And let us pray. Mother, perpetual help, help, we who call upon your most powerful name, we thank, thank you for the grace that we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayer today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things to you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us, and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools. As together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of all our people. Please help us if you can. Make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our websites www.redemptorists.ca or www.redemptorist.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptorists offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card, like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. So pray now for God's blessing on us all each day. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was in um, middle school, two redemptors came and helped us with Sunday school. And they always travel in a pair or more. They always bring a sense of community. It really attracted to me to see a group of men go preach the Word of God or go to teach a Sunday school and always teach together. The redemptors caught my attention. I love to be in a group. <laughs> 